uh, once again, welcome everybody and a special welcome to Tim Crawford uh, from the UK. Uh, Tim has been a professional musician for something like 15 years and then he gradually went into the digital, digital humanities, humanities space. space. And, and he has done a lot of work, for instance, on a digital corpus of Silver Slope Old Weiss, loot scores. And he has been the principal investigator of the Transforming Musicology project, which has really transformed <laughs> quite a bit of musicology. And uh, very recently, actually yesterday, another of his projects or where he's the was the PI from the United Kingdom, the Trompa project was very successfully reviewed uh, at the e EU. So uh, without further ado, Tim, the floor is yours. Uh, I was just about to uh, share my screen um, and uh, I think that's probably the uh, best thing I should do. Um, actually, first of all, I'd just like to say that uh, despite um, Jan's very um, uh, worthy intention that this should be about research results, inevitably, uh, I'll have to explain quite a lot of the background to um, what I'm uh, going to talk about. And uh, inevitably, that will mean that the research results will very largely get squeezed out. Um, also, uh, I have to admit that I haven't been, there ha really hasn't been the opportunity that I'd hoped to do any uh, extensive, as it were, uh, data mining type um, uh, research uh, in the way that I had always intended uh, with the tool that I'm going to be talking about. So inevitably, it's going to be a kind of um, uh, you know, more of the same uh, talking about a tool, but I'll try and contextualize it as much as possible with, with the work that I've, I've been doing um, uh, over the, uh, the, the time that I've been working on this particular project. I hope you'll be able to see my screen now. Uh, can you just confirm for me that you can see my screen? See a presentation beginning? Yes, we yes. see it. Yep. Yeah, good, that's okay, fine. That's all I wanted to know, because I'm um, sure. Okay, so th th this is about the, the issue which will arise from the problem of uh, trying to ac ac acquire as much uh, as we can of musical data. Uh, from uh, uh, existing library resources. Um, in other words, using um, music, uh, optical recognition. And of course, this throws up various problems that uh, you will probably be able to anticipate. Um, okay. Um, okay. Uh, F-Tempo stands for full text searching of early music prints online. Um, and I'll explain uh, in, later on how I'm going to have to look for a new title for this project. Um, uh, we'll, we'll see that later on. Okay, um, music, of course, as we all, everybody in this forum, I'm sure, understands is not text. Um, humanities computing, or as it used to be called, or the, what's now called the digital humanities, almost exclusively actually focuses on text. Um, actually, I wrote this possibly uh, two years ago for, for another presentation. It's probably less and less true that, that people are um, exclusively focusing on text, but very largely they are. Um, for, this means that for a digital pro approach to music, a digital humanities approach to music, we need some kind of musically coherent surrogate for text. And we call such a surrogate a feature. Um, and with such features, we can begin to explore the content of musical documents using digital humanities techniques and, and the, the, the techniques of data science. 
So by that, I mean, of course, on a large scale and um, across repertories that, that are, too, uh, are too large for an individual to uh, exhaustive, exhaustively uh, investigate. Um, okay, good. Okay, one of the, uh, many of the basic methods for digital humanities come from the computer science discipline of information retrieval. Um, and uh, in our case, we call the uh, process of extracting features from music and then performing information retrieval on them. We call that music information retrieval. Um, and the, the perfect, uh, the ideal solution is to extract straightforward one dimensional features from documents um, because we can apply very well understood um, techniques from information retrieval on these. Musical features, however, are always more complicated than this, and I think it's, this is all going to be obvious to people. Notes in music are complex things. Uh, their minimal characteristics are pitch, timing, that is when they start sounding, and that can be expressed in two different ways, either an absolute time or as a relative time to the other notes in the, in the piece or other events in the piece. Durations, how long they last, um, and timbre, how they actually sound, and that would include um, things like details of instrumentation and specific performance instructions, for instance, pizzicato as opposed to arco uh, for violin, um, it being an obvious one. And you could add many others, uh, other types of performance instructions in the score and so on. Text as I was saying earlier, can, can easily be represented of strings, effectively of numbers. Uh, and uh, the, the standard uh, um, method for doing this is, is called ASCII or, or, or now um, superseded by Unicode, which actually um, includes ASCII in its, um, in its uh, definition. For most digital humanities purposes, we're not generally concerned with with the font in which the document is written or with the style that is, whether it's italic or, well, we might be for semantic reasons, want, uh, for instance, to, uh, to recognize um, italics and uh, bold and, and capitals and so on, or, or the color of the letters. Generally, they're not as important as the, the words um, which are, um, considered um, to contain the, uh, the semantic content, of course. Text is, of course, structured in, in words and sentences and paragraphs and pages, uh, which led uh, humanities researchers to, um, uh, to instigate the text encoding initiative, which I'm assuming people are vaguely familiar with, Music, of course, too, is highly structured, which has led to what we call the Music Encoding Initiative, which, um, like the TEI, enables semantically meaningful full text analyses of uh, documents encoded in these formats. And actually, these um, MEI was designed specifically so that it can actually be uh, included within a TEI TEI document and vice versa, though, though I, I'm not sure how many examples of the latter there are. Um, there are certainly uh, examples where uh, MEI is in, in, included within a text encoding initiative document. Okay, uh, just to quickly run through the way um, th this program F Tempo um, encodes uh, a typical page of um, a, from a printed uh, early music source and I should say it's absolutely essential well no it's not absolutely essential but it's uh, optimized highly optimized for um, typeset music um, and of course most 16th century music that was published uh, is in fact typeset um, 
it is it's not generally uh, possible to use my uh, system with um, manuscript music, except in the case where the manuscript looks very close to the kind of notation you can see in front of you now. Uh, and some of it does, and uh, it's surprising how often actually um, the optical methods do actually work on manuscript choir books, for instance, which are just like the printed ones from the period. Okay, so here's an example of a, a, a page from a canto part book of uh, Rore's Madrigal. Um, okay, uh, it's pretty obvious to to people like yourselves that uh, you know what these what the individual um, components of this fragment are, and you can see that the clef is a C clef on the bottom line. So that the first of the notes there is an F, A, A, G, F, G, A, B. That's that's obvious. Now, when you subject a page like that to optical music recognition, you're going to get two characteristic types of error. Um, those which affect a single note or a symbol, like literally placing a note on a wrong line, like um, altering the, uh, uh, the duration by recognizing uh, uh, um, a, well, a crotchet as a minimum in, 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 in uh, UK terms. Um, so filled in notes as uh, open notes. And uh, that's an example of something which affects a single note. And of course, there are other types of error which affect all subsequent notes. Like if you get a clef wrong, uh, all the intervals that follow all the chromatic intervals that follow will be wrong, uh, or, or at least they will be uh, in a different. They, they, the pattern that emerges will be will be wrong. Um, so, uh, just to make to get over this, we do do two things in one. We ignore rhythm because we know that. Um, uh, the other, the other problem that can happen is that uh, a, um, a time signature or mensuration sign gets recognized incorrectly, which means that this can throw out uh, subsequent um, rhythmic relations. Uh, and we also it, it just use diatonic information. So we, we talk about pitch steps in diatonic terms, and this is very easily seen in this next slide where, um, as you can see, the intervals, the diatonic intervals here are uh, between an F and an A, it goes up two steps, F, G, A. Um, between A and A, there's, there's a step of zero. Um, between A and G, there's a step down. So we encode that, we're using upper and lower case letters of the alphabet. This is a very simple um, form of uh, encoding. Actually, I didn't invent this. Uh, it was invented by the people at RISM uh, and uh, it, it's used, I think it originated from the, uh, researchers at, at, in Munich, but I'm not absolutely sure who came up with the idea. It is actually very convenient because it, it's a direct mapping into easily manipulated ASCII characters. So that page that you see there the actual musical content, and of course, this is ignoring text completely. That's another thing which is being left out. Um, it looks like that string at the bottom. Um, okay, where have I been getting uh, images from? Well, for the first um, half of my project, which began about three years ago, um, <coughs> I was relying on um, images which were supplied to me directly by, by the British Library, for instance, um, because I have good relations with the librarians there. I was able to get um, uh, a um, hard drive full of TIFF images. But 
since then, or, or at least in parallel with that um, generosity, that there has been a, a, a gradually um, uh, a spreading um, uh, set of standards, which is called the International Image Interoperability Framework for all kinds of images. The IIIF um, allows direct access to both high quality images and metadata, metadata through a standardized API, <coughs> which I'm not going to go into in any detail at all. Um, but um, this means that it opens up for this kind of purpose um, uh, many large and important music libraries, uh, including the Munich Bavarian State Library, which is the one that I've I've got, which is the main, the bulk of my collection so far. The pa Paris Bibliothèque Nationale, which I've got a lot of images from, similarly from London British Library, and the Berlin State Library. I also have the Triple I F manifests. Um, which, which is a, a particular type of document which describes what is available um, from the Bibliotheca Jagiellonska in uh, Krakow, which as uh, musicologists know, contains the, the rest of the Berlin um, materials that were uh, for a long time lost after World War II, but turned up uh, in Poland uh, and are now housed at the um, the Krakow University Library. Um, now, what we do is we uh, recognize those images with a specialist optical musical recognition uh, program called Arispix, uh, which was developed by Laurent Pougin, who pe several people will probably know from his work at RISM. Um, okay, so I'm now going to go to my demo of the, the basic program. Um, that means I'm going to stop the share now and uh, resume it again in a few seconds, I hope. Um, if I can do it quickly, uh, I should be able to do that now. Share screen. Um, and the only trouble is it's a bit difficult to see. Um, Okay, I'll do I'll do that one and then you. Okay. Right. Uh, I hope you, you you can see something now, which uh, shows early music online search at the top left. Is that right? Can you see that? Yep. Yes. Yes. Good. Good. Fine. Okay. I never quite believe. Okay. What this um. Uh, is showing you is a uh, just a, a starting page from the collection, which in fact comes from the it's actually the the first item in the database, which happens to be from the British Library. Now, if I click on random page, uh, it will find, oh, it will find in this case a non music page, which is rather boring. Okay, um, the second random page I clicked on um, produced a page, Angelus. Uh, Pastores. Um, and if I do a search on this, it will actually find me, I hope. Yes, in the database, it's found that very same page right at the top. Uh, and then as we go down the list, it's found other things. Now you can see from, they are, they're not coming from the same book. Uh, you can see that the uh, typesetting is slightly different. And this is on, on, the, on the part of the screen on the right there. You can see how it uh, is, is laid out slightly differently. In the third case, it's got the name Orlande at the top, which means it's by Lassus, which is very convenient because uh, as you can see, the RISM sigler for all these items are in fact DMBS, which, which means the Bavarian State Library. Um, and, and of course, Lassus himself worked at Munich, so they have an enormous collection of Lassus's uh, music there. And if we go down this list, we've got a pretty good uh, uh, set of results here. Uh, 
Now we come to this point where we've reached, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh match. Uh, now we're going to go to another one. And even though the, um, the quality of that match has declined a lot, if you look at the bottom of the screen on the bottom right, you will see the opening of uh, the same piece, um, which is something I, I hope right at the end of my talk, I'll be able to come back to, that is things I want to try and improve in the future. Um, but you, you, you can see that this system is even recognizing a, a, a piece that doesn't begin at the beginning of the page, if you follow me. After that, oh, we've got more. Uh, now, uh, right at the bottom of this list of, uh, uh, I think it's 10, are, uh, yes, it's, it's definitely a different piece. So, so, so that's a, that's a, a non-relevant match, as, as one would say in, in, uh, in um, IR terms. Um, okay, that's, that's one thing we can do. Um, now, uh, trying to focus a little bit on um, actual results, um, I'm going to show you some of the examples um, that we've got here. Uh, one of the things you can do, for instance, is look again at Lassus, uh, and it's done a, a search of an English translation of uh, his famous um, uh, chanson, uh, Suzanne Anjour, and you can see the different versions of that as I go down the list. Um, th th they vary very nicely in typesetting, actually, and I think this is one of the potential strengths of an interface like this, that especially for students who are used to seeing things in um, exclusively in modern editions, uh, to be able to see what the original looks like is a very nice, nice thing. And if we could, these these are not high quality images. They're extracted from high quality um, color uh, scans of the originals. But what, what we what we've got here is the actual images that are used by the OMR software once it's done its pre-processing to find the 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 main part of the image uh, so you can see just how various the um, the different uh, the different printings of this thing and of course it's found a, a nice uh, example of a translation and that that raises another type of thing that this program uh, is quite successful at finding um, for instance transposed versions. Here's a Villert uh, Richikar, which uh, I'm pretty sure appears, yes, in two different, uh, yes, at different pitches, uh, in two different editions. Um, sorry, I, I prepared these, um, these examples um, a, 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 about 18 months ago, and I haven't really looked at them much since, but uh, I think you can see that it's the same music. Uh, here we come down to, because this is a, this is a, um, a, a, a richer car in very closely imitative style, you'll get a lot of the same uh, motives and uh, a lot of the same music actually appearing in other part books. So here's an example. Um, where, where uh, we, we use the basses part on the left of your screen as, as the, the, the query and we're finding the cantus part um, lower down the, the list of matches. After a bit, of course, the, um, the, the matches drop off and you get other things coming in. Um, now that leads to another kind of discovery um, where I was able to find, for instance, it's an anonymous lauda called Eco Care Forelle uh, 
in the British Library collection, which rather surprisingly actually uh, turns out to be a Verdolo madrigal. Uh, and you will see that if you were doing a, a standard RISM type um, uh, incipit search, note that I don't know if you can see my uh, mouse point, the, the pointer, but the third note uh, actually is different. Uh, the, 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 on the, on the, the ca, ca of care there, um, it's, there's a D instead of what should be, I, I suspect, an E uh, in the original uh, Verdolo Magical. So there's an example of um, how it, it's able to recognize uh, the, 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 the overall musical content without being thrown out by uh, um, a, a, a wrong note in the intrepid. Uh, if we go down, you'll see there are various other examples. Actually, look, that's interesting. I've only noticed this for the first time today. One of the uh, editions of, uh, no, that was a discovery I have just made in front of you. Um, th this fourth match here, that third note is the same as in the louder. Now it's up to the Verdolo experts to sort out what the, what the, uh, the truth of this is. Should that be a D or should it be an E? I don't know. Maybe there's someone here who can um, clarify that for us. Further on, um, well, we, we, we find ourselves finding the bass part. So we've got the same sort of uh, issue. Oh, sorry, there's a, a glitch there. Uh, let's not worry about the rest of the thing. Um, one example, which I think is rather more exciting perhaps is this example. Um, in a collection of um, richer cars, there's, there's one here marked um, Encerto Autore, in other words, an unknown author. I don't know who the author is, the publisher says. Uh, but if we go down the list, we'll see that, okay, there's an, another edition of this same piece. But uh, in the British Library, uh, is definitely, no question about it, the same music um, ascribed to Damianus. And in fact, uh, Damianus, it's, it's, it's a bit controversial who this person is, and I'm not going to stick my neck out and say who, who that is, but um, there are various candidates, uh, but it, it's quite definitely it's quite definite, therefore, that this Richard Carr is, in fact, an arrangement of a, um, a pre-existing uh, motet um, rather than an independent instrumental um, composition. Um, just finally, looking at these examples that I've got here, it's one I rather like because it's, it's fun. OK, here we got a chanson, um, Vous perdez. Ton, uh, by um, Archidelt. Um, sorry, there's a, there's a glitch here that there won't be any image for the. Oh yes, there is an image. Oh, there we are. We've got another. We've got we've got two. Oh yeah, that's right. The first image won't work, but we can find this piece again. Uh, do you see? It's not the first item on this page. It's the second item. Etil avi. So it's a different uh, set of words to the same music. Uh, and if you look through it, you will find that it really is the same music with some slight uh, rhythmical differences, but on the whole, uh, it's obviously the same piece. Um, yet it's also an Italian madrigal by Verlo. And Further down, we have, I think, I think I'm right in saying yet another. Here we are, a German text. So one of the things that I'm hoping this uh, tool will enable uh, when it's uh, in its full glory 
um, and has a very comprehensive collection of, of images uh, indexed within it, um, it would be very useful for detecting contrafactor like this um, of various kinds. I'm not going to make any statements about what is below that, no. Okay. Um, another thing we can do, there is a, a, a possibility of uploading an image to the database and asking it to, um, uh, to try and find that. And in fact, I took on the RISM database, uh, um, website, there was a, 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 a discovery was mentioned in March this year of a, a set of proofs which were bound, marked proofs, which were found in the binding of a, of a book in the, actually in the Bavarian State Library again. And I took this image that you can see there, which you have to agree is a pretty bad image. And um, let me show you what happens when we, uh, if, now this, this may not work, but I, I'm pretty sure it will. We can choose from this, that's right, that's my image. Okay, that's, that's the image that you saw in that um, uh, uh, website, and I definitely tried it. There it is. Okay, so we now we click on upload and search. It says, please be patient. And if all goes well, if we're patient just for, for a while, while it's doing the optical recognition. Yes, I'm glad to say that the first match is indeed Salve Regina Marta Misericordia. So even rather bad, uh, sorry, images like that can be recognized. And you'll find that going down the the hits there are, uh, that's not, oh yes. And uh, no, I was going to say that, no, the, the, uh, the main thing is that it's been able to identify that. So that was one of my motivations with this um, uh, project was to have a system which um, allows uh, a librarian, say, so, imagine uh, you're sitting in a music library and someone brings in a 16th century part book with the title page missing and says, what's this music? In principle, uh, once one has a decent database, you should be able to slap it on your scanner uh, within five minutes well, no, within a few seconds after that, you should be able to send that image to this uh, system and it will return you the best matches. And if, if this, is, this particular example is really quite encouraging in that way. I'm going to stop the share just for a second while I switch screens back to the, um, to the oh, I have to go back to, sorry, I'm being stupid. No. How do I get out of that? Oh, okay. Let me show. Sorry, it was a bit dim there. Um, okay, I now want to introduce um, the uh, Trumper project a little bit. Um, this is uh, a collaboration, well, it was, it's just finished. In fact, as, as Jan very kindly um, uh, mentioned, we, we got a very uh, positive review from, from the EU yesterday. Um, it was a collaboration between various uh, universities across Europe. Uh, it was, um, coordinated by um, University Pompeo Fabra, Fabra in Barcelona. Uh, and uh, it was able to bring to bear, to bear a lot of uh, techniques which generally are, 
are connected with music information retrieval, though I wouldn't say all of them were pure examples of that. Uh, it's actually rather broader than that. Um, and uh, it's been very exciting. And I would uh, just like to mention one particular aspect of this, which is the one that, that I was responsible for um, supervising. That is what we call the Music Scholars Digital Score Interface or, or Digital Score Edition. Um, this was originally, our intention was to investigate um, some of the expression marks in Mahler's symphonies. And you can see in the top right of the screen there, uh, the the fourth symphony of uh, Mahler uh, is uh, in, in just peeping over the the back of the uh, the, the trumpet interface is is an example of uh, a marked up score uh, from from the Amsterdam Concertgebouw uh, collection. Uh, and it shows the, the kind of detailed uh, markings that, uh, um, uh, what was his name? Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. The, 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 the point is that, that we were interested in, in that. In the event, uh, what, what, we, what we did was use a piano reduction, a, a, a two piano reduction, as you can see on the right um, pane. Of, of this thing, uh, which means that we, uh, on which the um, expression marks are, are, are presented. Now this interface allows you to annotate the uh, score as much as you like, and all the annotations are effectively uh, recorded by the trumpet system so that they can be displayed for anyone else and it's it's regulated by um it's controlled and uh access is controlled by uh, a, a system a state-of-the-art system of um data protection called solid um which i don't propose to talk about at all that was one um major um, use of this technology. The, the second one was going to be on early music and early vocal music. And uh, uh, I'd like to uh, now, sh the, the digital score edition was in fact um, developed by uh, my colleague uh, Federico at Goldsmiths. And I'm going to stop share again and show you this very, very quickly. I think we still got time. Yeah, just I've got, we got five minutes or so, haven't we, before we have to go on. So, um, okay, let's set this up now. Share screen again. Here we are. Okay. Um, this is um, an example. I'm, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is search the trumpet collection, the, the database of, of items that we have, uh, as it were, registered within the trumpet system, which uh, can be displayed. Uh, so I'm going to type the words bon. Uh, let's see what we've got. Okay, we've got those. I'm going to actually add the word jour to that. Oh, I've typed it wrong, so there's nothing. But if I type bonjour, we get the lasses bonjour mon coeur. Uh, and here it is, and we can navigate through this uh, and we can we can zoom in on particular parts of it if we want to. Um, but also what we can do now is search 
the F-Tempo database. And if I click on that, uh, at the moment we can only search individual uh, voice parts. And as you see, for some reason, it, it, the system thinks there are six voice parts here because somebody started putting in a piano reduction and obviously never added any notes. So, so it's only got a, one system of piano um, there. And so that's pretty meaningless. Um, but if we do a search, you will see that actually because of some very clever um, programming by Alistair Porter, who is actually in this audience, um, he's been able to increase the speed of this uh, search very, very quickly. So I'm going to click now and you will see as quickly as that, it finds the, the, definitely a match and another match and another match, another match, another match. Ah, another German version of, of a chanson. So uh, in principle, all those things going down through this, we had a German version. We now have a religious contrafactum of the of the chanson. So uh, ah, now at this <clears throat> at this point in the list of results, we're we're beyond um, relevance. I very much doubt there's anything else useful below. But Christ et mon Dieu is probably as far as we're going to get. But that means that we found um, many of the many results within the collection. Now that is searching from the MEI encoding, which um, Trumper uses, uh, which of course is clean. Uh, it, 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 it doesn't have any errors in it or it shouldn't have any errors in it. It may, may have a few wrong notes, but it's not like optical music recognition um, output. Um, what, what the next, one of the next things we're going to be doing um, is, uh, and again, I'm going to share a different screen and uh, uh, is, is to, uh, one of the next things that we're going to do is to index the uh, collection of actually many more uh, than the few hundred um, early music items within the Trumper collection, but there, there are about 11,000 scores in all at the moment, um, but we hope to uh, index all those so that we can do similarly fast searches. Uh, but using a slightly different technique, uh, we should be able to look for individual motives and that kind of thing, um, but that's slightly waiting. I just wanted to, flag up a couple of problems, one of which you saw actually in one of my um, uh, demo, demo examples was if when you have the end of one piece and the beginning of the next on the same page, of course, the chances are that's going to confuse the search. Um, also, another similar problem is that actually in the 17th century, uh, it, it's much uh, more common than perhaps is generally recognized that actually they went to the trouble of typesetting whole scores, that is, um, in, including soprano, alto, tenor, and bass um, uh, on the same page. Now, in those cases, of course, the, uh, there's no way you can extract a, a, a single string which um, relates to one part only. Uh, and you, you have to use rather more clever things. So what I'm hoping we should be able to do is use those encodings as rendered by Verovio uh, as a background to locate 
the regions for searching system by system. And actually I can, again, very quickly show you uh, what I mean. Um, if we can go back to the, uh, the on screen, go back to that one. And if I go to here, um, uh, if I'm going to actually search a corpus and do a search there. Okay. Sorry, there was a, a kind of um, a bit of, no, that this is probably, uh, if I just do another random one. Okay. Let's take this example. What we can do is a comparison between Oh, by the way, is that showing? Can you see a score with a whole lot of notes in pink? No. Okay, I will. I have to. This is one of the problems with Zoom. You have to keep. If you open a new window in a in a um, program. Uh, yes, here we are. Uh, you can see what I've got is an interface which shows you this is the, those now it's showing you the rendered MEI built from the um, OMR uh, output uh, and you can superimpose the image the original image on that which means that uh, you can locate uh, all the notes can be located. So what I'm hoping is that we will come up with an interface whereby you could, uh, f f in the case where you're searching uh, for using a part of a score as a query, you can just select the counters part or something like that. Um, okay, I think that will probably do for this presentation and I hope I haven't spent too much time uh, talking about um, the technical background and I've been able to show you some of the potential for this kind of searching um, within a corpus. Thank you. So uh, thank you, Tim, uh, for showing us all this. I hope that I speak for everyone when I say that this is really damn impressive. <laughs> and, uh, and we now have time for some questions. Either just uh, raise your hand and uh, I will say that you have the word and, or you can write your questions in the chat and I will read them. So please go ahead. Uh, Lenka Hlavková has a question. Hello, uh, thank Hello. you very much. Thank you very much for your uh, very inspiring presentation because I'm working almost exclusively with the manuscripts of 15th and early 16th century music. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to imagine how uh, it would be possible to transform um, mm. these tools uh, were developed uh, for work with the with the prints to manuscripts i think it will be very much more complicated because of individual features of each manuscript but do you think uh, is there any any chance or any well, possibility I think for future thank one you one repertory that seems to me uh, as I think I hinted at the beginning um, in my rather uh, improvised talk, um, was a, one repertory that, which I think will respond well is choir books, uh, because they were they were deliberately written to be read at a distance by 
by a choir standing round the copy so that they are very, very clear on the whole. And the same applies to some of the sort of presentation manuscripts by Alamire and people like that. Um, but that's not the same as saying that that solves the problem of manuscript music recognition, which is very challenging in general. Obviously, um, we all know about composers like um, Beethoven and Janacek, who's, who's writing, I think, is, am I right in saying Janacek's handwriting is very difficult to, to understand? Um, there are many composers uh, of all periods, of course, who, who relied on amanuenses to, to make their fine copies. Um, Handel's music, I, don't, I don't, can't imagine that, that one could um, really uh, use OMR on that. Actually, Jan probably knows much more about this than I do because um, my knowledge of um, optical music recognition methods uh, is probably 15 years old. So this before the, the era of deep learning and so on, which has made big strides, especially in manuscript, I gather. Um, Perhaps you can say something about that, Jan. Yeah, it's generally uh, doable with deep learning, but uh, what is not clear yet is how individual ground, uh, how individual data sets where you are training the systems from generalize to each other. There have Absolutely. been decent results on on white Manzoro notation, mm. and that's a relatively standardized system even within manuscripts. So there is probably hope for, for this repertoire. Mm. I'm not aware of a working publicly available system yet, but mm. I suppose it's one solid three person, three year grant away. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that would at least um, open up a considerable repertory as of course, if we can get um, a large amount of typeset music in, I'm I'm also hopeful that. Um, well, I should say first of all that that engraved music in general tends to be problematic for the same reason as manuscript because it was very much up to the um, to the engraver uh, how. how the, the um, details in, in, the, in the music appear. Um, but of course, uh, engravers use tricks um, and they use techniques uh, with stamps, um, you know, with, with metal stamps that um, at least uh, impose a kind of regularity. Um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with with um, Telemann's um, own personal uh, typeset um, engraving, he he did he published a lot of his own music, um, and uh, you can see that at first sight it looks terrible, and you think, oh my God, you could never do OMR on that. But I believe that you really could because he was using these punches, um, which mean that all the uh, each symbol looks like every other example of that symbol. And it's and, and most of the, um, the problems are connected with the, with the relative uh, positioning of those symbols. So at least on the symbol recognition level, um, some sorts of engraved music would be possible. Also, there's a big repertory, of course, of 18th century and 19th and even 20th century uh, typeset music, which I believe could be uh, amenable to this type of technique. But I've never seen any system which can read, for instance, typical uh, late 19th century typeset music. Um, uh, for instance, piano music, which is done by typesetting. Most piano music at that period was, of course, engraved, and the the the, the wonderful engravers of Breitkopf and Hertel and and um, uh, Schott and all these uh, fine old firms um, could work like 
a manuscript uh, a copyist um, and uh, had total flexibility about the way they express the, the, the music on the page. Um, but uh, with the typeset repertory of the time, uh, that's, that's not the case. And I think it could be uh, uh, amenable to OMR. Uh, I see there's one, I think I've probably got to stop. Yeah, we're running out of time. Yes, exactly. We have, we have one more question in the chat. Uh, about uh, Gregorian chant repertoire, which I suppose oh, is interesting for many people uh, yes. here. I, I, I think that um, actually uh, my friends and colleagues at McGill University in, in Canada, uh, and actually um, Alistair Porter, you, you actually worked on uh, the, their um, system for recognizing uh, and uh, searching um, chant notation. Uh, and th th there is work going on in that area. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't been involved with it because I'm, I'm not personally, uh, uh, by any means, a Gregorian chant person. Uh, my own background is in lute music and there's a lot of 16th century lute music which actually can be, um, be read in this way. Alistair might like quickly just to say something about chant recognition. Well, it, it was it was certainly uh, almost ten years ago as well that I that I was working on that, and I think Jan's been working with Itch more more recently on on that kind of work. But I, I do know that the lab there, the the DDMAL lab at McGill, um, has a few online demos of of search. Uh, over a number of uh, books, uh, which they've been able to obtain scans for. Mm. Yeah, the I think the Cantus Ultimus uh, project is is what you're looking for, as kind of the state of the art of, of their efforts in this respect. Uh, there is a searchable version of the Liber Usualis there. Yeah, and. Jennifer is probably the most qualified person here to, to say that. Do check out the, the link in the in the chat. Great. All right. So uh, that was the first talk of this session.